Good evening, everyone, and welcome back to another Super Coach Insider podcast. My name is Swizz, here to talk round 13 team discussion and answer all your questions. As always, check us out on all our channels, YouTube, Spotify, Stitcher, SoundCloud, and the Twitter, Super Coach Insider 100, to talk to all the boys, and Swizz 26 for me. As always, thank you to our listeners, our sponsors, a new Splash Vodka and Manscaped. Straight into my team for last week, 1989, which has now moved me up to about 4,000 overall, 4,125 to be exact, 230 points behind Chris, I think maybe 500 points behind Ben, uh, so he made up some ground on them, which was good. Uh, the negative part of last week was my trades. I was debating about do I make a trade or don't I? Ended up making the three trades. Mitchie Owens came into the midfield. Um, we had McComb leave, and that was for uh, oh, and uh, and Sammy Hayes um, went out as well and brought in Tickle. But the big one was bringing in Stewart, uh, which looked really good in the first quarter. Um, unfortunately, then got concussed, as everybody knows, 39, and I could have kept Mitchie Hinge on his 83, so that cost me about 40-odd points. Um, was always going Laird as a VC into Took. Laird obviously scored really well, but Took with his that 160 um, would have been so much better, so probably ended up costing myself around 70 points there. Was considering Oliver, which would have been around the same for Laird anyway, so... I think the difference between that was one point. And uh, Maxi Gorn was a little bit of a consideration, but I, I kind of had the other three locked in. So a little bit disappointing there because, you know, leaving points um, again, especially with the uh, with the trade, but I guess that how, that's how it goes. Um, did have Tim English in and out. That last sort of minute we are talking about on our A-League chat, which is still the number one ranked league going, and uh, the guys kind of convinced me and, and girls with Emily um, to, to put in Owens and Stewart, which I thought was a great move because it kind of finished off my back line. Meant otherwise I was going to have to get Houston if I wanted to play and defend it this week. And yeah, as we know, that's just the way it goes, so... At least now I have a nearly completed team and the one thing I'm missing is a midfielder. Um, I'm currently counting Butters and Cornelio as finished forwards, but there is a view of enough trades that I could upgrade them going forward. Uh, we just recorded our weekly podcast and we had a bit of a chat about that. So I have a quick chat about each line um, and then I'll get into the question. So defense-wise, uh, Doherty, Sinclair, Crisp, Short, um, Hewitt and Stewart. Uh, McCartan is the one that's going to be traded out. I love his scoring. I love his flexibility. But um, he's the one with the cash that I need to get that midfielder in. So he will be the one that goes. And it just depends on which uh, rookie defender plays. Durden looking less likely. Marchbank has been named. or well, I don't think he's been named in the VFL side. Uh, so which means Marchbank looks like he's going to come in and play sort of that halfback flank. Uh, so we'll be waiting a bit more on Durden. So I'm now kind of waiting for Weir, hopefully, to get named. Um, he's looked pretty good in the GWS backline. So, yeah, he's definitely the option to get take that cash. And then it's moving up Rosas again. Looked really good last week. Um, in a perfect world, I'd love to hold him and make some more cash. But he will get me up. And at the moment, he will get me up to Zachy Merritt. The question will come, do I want to try to make another sort of 30 to 70k out of Clark or do I move him on and hopefully get another playing rookie in and that leaves me the chance to get either Parrish, Walsh or if I wanted to leave it one more week and get Mills but um, as good as Mills is scoring that's one whole week of a premium I'm missing out and is Mills going to score another 110 points throughout the last 10 games over Parrish and Walsh? Probably not. So that's what I am looking at at the moment with those guys. My midfield at the moment is Oliver, Neil, Cripps, uh, Laird, McRae, Miller, with Parrish or Walsh to come in. And then unfortunately Petrarca, still the most disappointing move of my season when I had that week of choosing between Mills and Petrarca. So there'll be questions next week. What do we do with him? I did sort of banter the idea about moving him last week. I kind of really wish I did that now. Um, but it's nearly getting in the cage stage where I need to keep him or 
you know, looking at maybe somebody else who's kind of bottom up or can I get another rookie out the following week and look like getting Mills in um, with his fixture on the run home. So there is some sort of thought there for me that um, do I go, yeah, keep Petrarca for one more week. Hopefully he rebounds because it's Queen's birthday, big match. He does love the big games. And, and then we'll sort of see from there. And then if he doesn't, well, how much money is it going to take for him to get himself up to Mills? Gorn, Cameron, and Wits in the ruck. Cameron is loopholing with Tico, who I brought in for Hayes for that cash gen last week to get Stewart. So my fourth line, Brody, Parker, Butters, Canelio, Dunkley, and Cameron. Uh, so it's just about then leaving enough trades because I've got 11 at the moment. We'll have probably either nine or eight, depending on what premium midfielder I go after that. And then... Yeah, do which uh, player I want to look in. So we were just talking about the Bulldogs players. Well, Bailey Smith is now a trade out, unfortunately. That headbutt plus the buy means he misses three weeks and also misses the uh, Dogs' easy games against the Hawks and the Giants before they have a really tough run. Uh, they play uh, Brisbane and Sydney away, Melbourne, Geelong away, I think St Kilda and Frio. I think Frio's game's at home. So some really tough games in there for the Doggies. Bonds carrying that shoulder injury, still good enough to average 100, uh, still a good forward option, but thinking there might be better options. Libert does come into play just because he's getting the most CBAs at um, the Bulldogs. And as I've been sort of spruiking, Jeremy Cameron in particular, Tommy Hawkins not as much, but still a good option with the Cats draw. They play West Coast twice. They've got North Melbourne, and I think they've got five games down at GMBH Stadium. So definitely looking at one of those Cats players on the run home. Maybe even a Duncan, but more set on sort of a Cameron. Not that I need them, but if I can somehow get the cash where I have a extra bench player, so say in a perfect world, I'd like them to be dual position. Um, but, you know, say Cameron might come into my team. Somebody else gets, say Butters, gets put onto the bench. He's covering the forwards and the... Um, uh, and, and the midfield um, through loophole and then Darcy Cameron can also then go to the rucks if I needed to cover a ruck and just then it's sort of the back line in a perfect world I'd love to get Perez and maybe another rookie up to a Stephen May or a Salem just so I have that cover I'm happy to kind of use up all my trades doing that as long as I have bench cover that's sort of how I play each year coming to those last couple of rounds with no trades but if I've got the players on the bench that can cover I'm not so worried. The only worry comes if I do that sort of three or four weeks out, then you've got a bit of a problem because um, you've just got cash sitting on your bench doing nothing, and that has cost me in the past. Uh, captaincies and vice captaincies, uh, Paddy Cripps against the Bombers. That's their big 150th. The Bombers should be up for it, but I think the Blues are going to be too good for that. So I'm definitely going to be looking at Cripps as a VC. Uh, you know, Neil is an option there, uh, who the Lions playing the Saints at home. So I don't mind that as a captaincy, but I'm going to back in at the moment. Clary playing up against Collingwood on the rebound. I usually don't like leaving my captaincy that late, uh, but I just think, yeah, he's playing really well at the moment and the Ds are needing to fire up and win. I actually think with May out um, with that suspension that the Pies are a big chance this week. So... Yeah, it it would be a very interesting one, as Benny likes to say. But, yeah, I think um, that's the way I'll go there. Crips into Oliver. A um, couple of side notes on that. We were talking about before uh, some interesting games coming up, especially that's what we'll, we'll say with the Doggies midfield. be interesting to see what they do if they start losing some of their games and they actually come out of contention. Um, like, I like watching the Doggies play, and I hope they you know keep fighting it out because, yeah, they're a very good team who could do some damage in finals with that, that midfield. But, yeah, if they were to lose a couple of those games like Brisbane, Sydney, um, and then Melbourne, all of a sudden find themselves, you know, behind a couple of games to the Pies or Richmond or even the Suns, um, yeah, they could start resting some guys. And uh, so, so some interesting fixtures coming up. Round 15, we were just talking about that. Going to be an absolute tipster's nightmare. So keep an eye out for that fixture. A um, bit better than a couple of the fixtures we've got this week. Hopefully the North Melbourne members who are watching this try to get out and support your team this week. I know it's a tough season, but uh, they need all your support as possible. All right, we'll kick it off with Twitter first this week. 
Uh, so obviously I usually do it Thursday night when the teams are getting dropped, but with the Richmond Port game on, I will be at that game. So I think Benny's going to be doing more of that this week. So check that out for your ins and outs and some of the discussion. Uh, we'll kick it off with Michikos. Uh, what do you do with Baz? Lowish trades. Do you need to move on Move on him if he misses three out of the next four? Unfortunately, yes. Um, it's just one of those unfortunate situations where you know, you're gonna, he's going to miss three weeks, a couple of really good scoring weeks over the buy periods. It's just an absolute nightmare. I know people have lowish trades. Like, I guess if you, for whatever reason, if you did have cover this week and next week, you might able, but the problem, again, it's th- sort of three weeks. It's just so hard. So I think you do need to get the side sw- swap option. Uh, some options there in that midfield. You, you kind of, it's really a tough one for the forward line too. Like if you could loophole in, but we we're just talking about options this week uh, for, so you're looking at the Giants, Port Adelaide, Richmond, St. Kilda, Carlton and Essendon. There isn't that many good forward options. Um, I say to the boys, I kind of look at the last three rounds, maybe even five round average, um, but we're really only needing somebody to go really well in the last 10 weeks. So say a Tommy Hawkins, just as an example. Uh, yeah, he might have not been traveling so well in the averages, but can he be a top six in the last 10 weeks? Well, playing West Coast twice in North Melbourne, yeah, he's got a chance there to score a couple hundred fifties. He could easily be a top six. Um, so I kind of ignore overall averages and, and look at some of those options. But unfortunately, if you look at those players, you've got Gresham. It's not a bad op- option because he's gone 109 in the last three weeks, but still will come back. Uh, at some point. Uh, Tommy Lynch, no. Zach Butters is 108 over the last three. Uh, would you be trading him in with any confidence? No. Brad Hill, no. Um, and then you've got Dusty, who's only going at 92. So unfortunately, there's not many forward options anyway. So unless you've got the cover or your, or Bailey Smith's currently in your forward line, um, yeah, it becomes a bit tougher because it's like, who do you trade in for him then? Unless you've got McCartan or DeConning and you could put one of them in the forward line and fix up your back line. Uh, there are definitely some better back line options to get in this week. Um, you just, if you don't have Hewitt, naturally him, Doherty, uh, Sinclair, and even Dan Houston. Um, I think, uh, well, I was saying to the boys before, I think Amon's on the out um, at Port, either heading to probably St Kilda or Carlton come end of the year through the free agency they're back in houston in chris does say he's a bit of a mix um, mr fix it but i still would back houston in to be a decent scorer definitely has a decent basement and can go big on any given week uh let's see anders just traded baz in again yes all my focus in on my cash league does trading him for merit m8 make sense um, leaves me with 12 trades and F6 to go. Yeah, and, and I believe D6 to go. Yeah, I don't mind that. If you can get the cash up to get Parrish or Walsh, um, definitely they're the better options. Even Ollie Wines should come into contention. But yeah, if you don't, Zachy Merritt, yeah, great option. He's the number two midfielder at the Bombers. They do have West Coast coming up. A um, couple other games there that they will be in. Um, I'm trying to think who else they've got, but like I don't expect the Bombers to win a huge amount of games, but you know, they do have Stringer coming back. Most of um, not struggling that bad with like some of the injuries that going forward, unless you know, unfortunately the Bombers always seem to lose some, but they do have players coming back. Uh, but yeah, the Eagles is a is a chance. The Suns at home, I think expect the Suns to still win, but they've got North Melbourne at Marvel. You know, you'd back the Bombers to win that. Uh, the Giants, even though it's away, uh, could have some good scoring days there. And then Port Adelaide, the second last round, Port could be out of contention by there. So, yeah, um, and it doesn't even seem to marry, matter with Parrish. They've got the Tigers, uh, the Pies. He scores well against those two teams. Even Merritt does as well. So, yeah, I, I, I don't mind that. I think he's a, a very good option at his price. All right, we've got... Uh, Kelsa, talking about Bombers Mans, is it worth getting both Parrish and Walsh this week? Would mean missing out on Laird and going Stewart when he bottoms out instead of Sinclair? Yes and yes. Parrish and Walsh, if, if you can get both of them in, absolutely do that. Uh, to Jevs, love the team update. Thanks, buddy. Um, Parrish or Walsh to finish the midfield. Flip a coin there. Um, I think Benny's replied and said, I'm going Parrish, so probably go Walsh. Um, I like Walsh, but Parrish doesn't have to share the points as much. Soft to draw, yes. Um, and that's the thing. Walsh has been starting up the forward line, 
moves up the ground. Um, it's just kind of making, well, it's just how they've sort of been setting up with so many midfielders in there. You know, we've got Kennedy, Cripps, Hewitt, Chera. So they're starting him off at half forward and he's moving up the ground, which is freeing up Walsh and, and really has helped his boost his scoring since coming in, though he probably score really well anywhere he plays. Um, but once again, the Blues have so many options in there and they do have some tougher games coming up. I think they've got the D's, the Lions, Frio. So they're not going to get as many of those points or the, as we say, the percentage of the pie. So yeah, Parrish, he's not sharing as many points. He always racks it up. He's a better version of Tom Mitchell. Like Mitchell gets his 30 touches and now he got, goes 85 to 90 some weeks where Parrish, you know, he can get 30 to 40 touches and still go 120, 130. So yeah, if you had to choose between the two, Parrish, um, if for whatever reason you could bring in the, the defender this week, if it was Sinclair, and then go and get Mills next week, that's a viable option. But yeah, I don't mind now getting Stewart when he bottoms out. out. That's if he bottoms out because he's going to have a massive break even, but they do play West Coast next week and he could just feast on them. Uh, so we've got Isaac Place, another good person on Twitter, I would say. Yeah, follow him because he's very active. Merit a good option for the run home, or do we go for Walsh, Parrish, Kelly? Yeah, I do like Kelly. I know Benny Boy hates him, but um, yeah, they do have North Melbourne this week. They do have a few tougher games, and the worry is what have with the Giants out of contention at what point, you know, especially if he gets a niggle, you know, does he get you know rested and stuff like that, and or does McVeigh start chopping and changing things? But I definitely do like Kelly as an option. But if I had to choose, you go Parrish, then Walsh, then Kelly. Um, Ab says merit is fine 113 average if you take out the 56 57 against the Swans where Robot didn't cleared him out up should be on for a solid 110 115 and yeah I agree with that so for the 100k cheaper and that and that's the argument I've got at the moment I was talking to the boys about this keeping Clark or trading him to a rookie so if I keep um, Clark and get merit can merit keep uh, score close enough to Parish to make that worthwhile, saving the hundred thousand dollars. And then, do I keep Clark for a couple more weeks, or even one more week, just to trade him down the following week um, to get Petrarca up to Mills? Because then I've got the cash to do that. So, uh, yeah, they're all food for thought. And 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 I guess it comes down to your team balance. Balance like, would I prefer Merritt and Mills versus say Petrarca and um, Parish? Well, you know, it's a on form at the moment, I'd probably want Merritt and Mills. So, yeah, it comes down to one of those things when how many trades you've got and, and what you want to do. But, yeah, I think Merritt Merit is going to be a very popular trade in this week. And I know, looking at the uh, the latest ones, he's, uh, I think he was up there as the second highest traded player. Yes, he is. Uh, 4,274 people, as we um, record, have tra- already traded him. Just behind is Parrish with 3,200 and then Walshie with 2,300. So, yeah, they're the both, they're all three of them are the popular people this week. Uh, to Brad, trade Bar- Baz practically three weeks without him. Pay up for Parrish or save money and go merit. Um, yeah, so this is a popular question. It all depends on how many trades you got and what else can you do with that money. And as I said, if that 100K helps me get from Petrarca to Mills, if Petrarca doesn't form this week, then and then you might be in the same boat where, um, like somebody um, said before about between Sinclair and Stewart, if that hundred k and you needed to get another defender and you save it by getting Merritt and you can get Stewart in the following week, well that's all in two weeks time. That's definitely a better move than say spending um, you know all up on Parish and then having to get a cheaper forward or defender if that needs to finish your team. Chris is a good example of that. He needs two more mids. He wants Laird and he wants Walsh. I think, or Parrish, one of the two. Um, but yeah, if you're, say, in his position there, and let's just say he could only afford merit this week, or he could go out and get Parrish, but in the following week it means he misses out on Laird. Well, this is all stuff you've got to balance in. Um, but yeah, if you've got the money and you can go up to Parrish, go and get Parrish uh, to L. Uh, top, tra- ta- top target out of Jelly, Merritt, Walsh, Keys, Boak, or Mills, no to Boak. I was talking that to Benny Boy before. He was considering him, but he's playing too much forward time for my liking. Or even Mills. Um, the thing with Mills, he misses one more game um, because he hasn't had his bye yet. So he needs to score 10 points more per week than those guys for a note to be better overall. Um, if you're only playing for leagues, go and get Mills, number one. 
you know, sacrifice this loss this week, or if you can still win, great. But um, yeah, Mills is still the number one if you're a head-to-head player. But if you're an overall player, yeah, out of those options, yeah, Walsh, I'd probably go Merritt then Jelly, um, just because I get a bit worried. Like I, I think Kelly's a fantastic offer option, and if you think he's going to stay healthy, absolutely. But Merritt's got the better history on that. Um, to Corey, who I think is a really good North man. Um, so hopefully you out to the games. I'm pretty sure you will be, Corey. Uh, who to pick this week, Jelly, Walsh, or Parrish? We've answered that now. Can get to rank 35K now. Has had a horrible, yeah, with just seven. Interesting, interesting. Um, he goes on to say, um, what does he say? Uh, he talks about um, some of the options he's jumped on, and unfortunately it's pushed him back. Um you're the sort of person now, if you're only going for leagues, um, yeah, you kind of suss out on sort of those league players and that, but I'd still be looking at Walsh or Parrish. If you're playing just for overall, then maybe it's throw the dice at Kelly or maybe it's even Walsh because he's probably, I think his ownership's quite low as well. Um, there's, there's actually all three of them have quite uh, low ownership at the moment. I think Walsh, coming into this round was 7%. Um, Parrish is sitting at 10%. And Merritt is... Well, Merritt is 1% at the moment, so they'll go up to 5%. Yeah, maybe it is Merritt. And that just to... Um, yeah, well, actually, you haven't asked for Merritt, so probably Walsh, just because it's a bigger pod and you're trying to catch up on people. It's, worth, it's useless having... Um, you know, getting on somebody with the same percentage in that because you're, you're behind, so you're trying to find points to catch up. So you may as well go the biggest pod, which will be Walsh. Over to the Richmond Forum, uh, Matty G, uh, and that's Matty Gretz, not um, Grimo. Is Pete Lean worth a spot as a pod under the new coach, or does his position change with Toronto and Whitfield returning? Um, I think if you're going to get um, Pete Lean, you had to get on him last week. He's gone up 65K. Like the hell he's playing that second role with um, up forward. He's kicked some goals, looked really good. Um, but now, what are you paying 300k for a guy that could have got cheaper? And th- and that, that's the whole issue. Like he scored, yeah, a ki- what, was it 98 and 112? I think off the top of my head, might have been 123. Is he going to do that every week in a GWS team that's struggling? No. So he's not going to be a keeper. He's a ca- cash cow that you needed last week. So the answer to me for that would be no. If he keeps it up, good on him. But um, I think th- th- there's always people who pop out. Sometimes as a cash cow, as we talked about, um, Darcy Cameron, when you need to jump on there, you're you're more looking at those guys who sort of had that role change for like a ruck or into the midfield. Um, people playing second forward, you, or it's like a small forward. Th- those guys aren't the sort of guys you want to jump on because they're just too inconsistent. Uh, and he also asked, do you think I should hold on to Vlostom with Bolter likely back this week? His role may um, should change and could go back to an intercept role. Yeah, it, depending on who we name, um, and me being a Richmond man, but I, I think you still hold Vlostom. He's had a monopoly on the kickouts with short play, more midfield. So I'd just be continuing the back him in. And then if it kind of goes pear-shaped this week again, yeah, and if you don't have like a Stewart or somebody like that, maybe then consider there, but I'd hold him for now. Uh, to Brian G, with only seven trades left before making any this week. Yeah, absolute crazy, mate. To consider speculating on someone like an Elijah Hollands who has MFDPP, is banging down the door, and Jew has said they want to unleash him at some stage. Not sure that I'd trust you enough. Elijah Hollands is absolutely killing it. He's that sort of Petrarca type. Um, I think he's going to just come in and play more forward, but he's got to get a game at some point. Um, if I'm going to be really selfish at the, this point of the season, I come and I hope he doesn't so we can get him cheap next year. The problem is the Suns are playing so well. So who kind of goes out? Rankin, Rosas, well, you're not taking them out. So I do think he's going to find his way in. There'll be an injury and he'll just continue to smash the v- VFL where they'll have no choice to pick him. But they've got some actually good players playing there. Uh, Fiorini's... Um, that Tistus, uh, so they're the young players who are performing well. All they can do is knock down the door. I feel like it's a case that he'll probably come in, maybe play a couple of games before we go drop, come back in again. Um, it'd be a different story if the Suns were back down the bottom. 
but they're a real chance of being a contender for the final. So I'm not as confident on him as I was. I, I really thought he would have got a game by now. But, um, yeah, the Suns are very interesting the way they play people. Uh, we've seen it with Brody. I think Fiorini will be out the door come the end of the season. He'll probably be next year's Brody. So do I trust you? No. So probably avoid see if there's another option there. Um, and I think there'll be a couple of these options that we talked about last week on the mid-season draft. So maybe have a listen back at that. Um, uh, the West Coast guy, um, Jai Cleary, Cully, Jai Cully, um, I th- and also Carmichael from Collingwood probably be more likely to to get a game soon. I think, uh, as Chris was saying, Carmichael was talked up by McRae this week. Probably needs one or two more weeks, and then I, I can find, see him getting part of that Collingwood system. Uh, Lee Hardy, why is Petrarca scoring so badly? Uh, he's been ill, so he um, played ill the week before, and anybody who's had kind of this flu going around or COVID or whatever, um, and I don't think it was COVID, but illness, it's been actually really zapping people. Like, you know, Timmy English was really struggling with it. Obviously, it's bounced back. Um, I was talking to a couple of people uh, at work and that, and they were really struggling, you know, sort of 10, 12 days. So I think he would benefit from the break. Um, hopefully he gets through all right against the Pies. But, yeah, the week off, and I think he'll come home strong. But, yeah, at the moment, that that would probably be zapping his energy a bit. Uh, should we be worried? Is it worth holding him at M8? Yes, I talked about that before. And Kelly Parish Merritt. So I'll give him this week. Have a look at it. Hopefully he bounces back. Queen's birthday. Um, and then have a look at one of those options. I don't know if I'd be trading him this week. Um, because well, I've got no issue if, you, if you've got those extra trades and you want to do it, absolutely go and get Parish, mate, for sure. Or even Merit if you if you don't have the cash. But, yeah, I'd probably hold. Um, and to Brad, worth uh, trading out Carroll, if not named, for a rookie who is playing, e.g. Owens, if named. I expect Owens to be named after his last game. Or cutting um, Paddy McCartan out now for his cash. Or is it better holding him? Um, cutting McCartan allows 200k for upgrades, yes it does and that's why I'm looking at Paddy McCartan if you're in the position to hold him um, absolutely because he's a great uh, you know, D7 F7, if you can loophole and you've got a loophole player there especially if you can bring in a 102k player to loophole him with um, if you still have SDK, even better um, and you can get one of the full one on the back, but you really are you know, Paddy McCartan as that backup fantastic but I think he'll be a popular player and I think he's the most traded out player so far this round um, where you can um, yeah definitely use that cash uh, he's still got a break even I think it's 52 this week so you know he could easily smash that and if he comes out and scores another 80 or 90 next week yeah that cash is going to continue to go up um, for those trading him you're kind of hoping he sort of has that 50 60 game and then that stalls his cash making and you know you've maximized the cash for him anyway uh, so it's a real flip of a coin, what you want to do. I think uh, Abdul was saying this, where he, in a perfect world, can hold McCartan and be that um, bench player and even a loophole option. If you've got a non-playing player, you can McCartan, Swans should be playing early in the rounds with a floating fixture because they're going to be up the top of the ladder. Um, you can loophole McCartan, and you know, if he goes really well, you can bench one of your premiums. Or in a perfect world, um, you want to def- uh, how you really would like to set up with that um, you have your non-playing player in the forward line, which is your defence midfielder, and you have another non-playing player who's a defender midfielder, and you'd have them in the midfield. And then, yeah, if McCartan was to go off, then you could put Hewitt into the midfield, and then, yeah, loophole Hewitt or loophole someone else, and it gives you sort of multiple loopholes on the run, on the run home. So I know a few people at, the, at this stage are going, well, I kind of don't need the cash gen. I'm, I've used most of my um, trades. So let's just maximize the cash, get the 102k players in, and I can sort of, uh, I can, you know, do multiple loopholes each week. Uh, the flip side to that, for those people who actually are playing in, bringing in um, playing rookies, you know, that still gives you a scoring option. But yeah, if you do have a couple of trades left, that might help you, you know, upgrade somebody on the run home. Or as we were talking about before, you know, bringing in that sort of D7 who might be a May or a Salem. Or, you know, you might have to look at a Tommy Mitchell or a Jeremy Cameron or Hawkins type or something who can be on your bench. And you can loophole that. Um, 
you know, in a perfect world, I'd love to keep Darcy Cameron and have him as that sort of guy and bring in like a Jeremy Cameron. Um, so, yeah, that's what people start to look at now because of those extra trades and maximising the, the, their rookies for as much cash as possible. So there's different ways to play it. Um, so have a kind of look at your side. But the, the main goal, and with a lot of people, um, obviously, as I said, Merritt or Parrish coming in would finish my side this week. Um, and then it just depends on, hopefully, with no injuries, where I want to go there. Is it upgrading players that I've got on field, like your Butters to, say, a Liver or Bont, or is it upgraded Petrarca to a Mills, or is it trying to get in that bench cover? Um, but, yeah, and then these are the decisions now which will make a difference for us in the run home. Like, um, this is also the time to look at your pods. So Parrish and Walsh, uh, Merritt, they are all pods. Uh, so if you're running them against, say, a Brayshaw, who's probably got a bit of a tougher draw than he did on the run home, um, you'd be backing them in to go better. Um, some people are looking at wines. Uh, yeah, so there's that that sort of M8, I think, is going to change a lot because if you get one that gets on a really good run, um, and and you're benefiting from that, um, yeah, you could really move up the rankings. And that's where, say, a left-field option, as I was saying, like Libba with the doggies' injuries or a Jeremy Cameron with, you know, playing West Coast twice, playing North. Yeah, you, it was a bit unfortunate he went up 42K last week with that 153 against the doggies, who they've still got to play. Um, yeah, in a perfect world, I would have loved him to score just 100 and not go up so much and than that, but... Yeah, it's those sort of left field pods um, with the right fixture, and that can really help boost your ranking. So, I um, also talked about rucks with the boys before, and you know, if you're desperate for a ruck, like in a perfect world, you want kind of Gorn uh, if you don't have him, but still hasn't had his buy, so that's an issue. Uh, Wits is one week, you know, obviously he's got his buy this week, so you want to wait next week for him, but, you know, Nan Curvis isn't a terrible option. I know I'm being you know, a little biased with, as a Richmond supporter, but yeah, his last three and even five-week average is really good. He's got some really soft ruck draws. So, yeah, unfortunately, some of those other guys coming off the buys aren't that as great this week. So the forwards and outside of Nan Curvis, the rucks aren't great options. So in a perfect world, if you've got enough primos and you don't really need to move one, you're... Next week's a much better round to upgrade. But, yeah, remember that if you wait in one more week, um, that's one less game those guys are playing. So they have to average around 10 points more than the guys you would have brought in this week to be worthwhile. So a lot to think about there. Um, keep, yeah, sh- sending us your questions. Hit up Ben in particular because he's got uh, the pod on Thursday. But happy to continue to answer your questions. And happy super coaching, everyone. Bye.